Well, welcome to my channel. If you're a returning viewer, welcome to some more pain and misery. Um, if you're new here, uh, let me introduce myself. I'm not f***ing Santa Claus, um, but they call me Rock and Roll. That's why this channel is called Rock Builds. Um, this, obviously I got my guitars out here. Stupid squeaky chair. It's not bad gas. That's usually after Thanksgiving dinner. Um, so why do I have these out? Well, any return of views probably know what these two are. Um, if you're new here, these are past builds on this channel. I recommend checking them out if you're interested on how I turned a JS32T into that and an old RG Ibanez uh, pretty much kind of kind of part build but it is an original RG from 1998 that one you can check out that build too um, so obviously this must be something guitar related not model related I already just almost spent a whole year on a series already that we just concluded so we're gonna go into this um, which is the next build Wow, stop it. You sh Anyways, exactly why we got to do a build here. Hold on. Okay. So, this is an LTD from ESP. By the way, I'm not sure on it being an LTD because it's um, obviously an LTD is kind of like the bastard child of an ESP. Uh, actually, but LTDs are actually made pretty damn good. Um, there's no shame in having an LTD if you can't afford an ESP, but usually I'll don't have somebody having a Squire instead of a Fender or an Epiphone instead of a Gibson. Well, then again, I don't give a shit about Epiphone and Gibson. They're just more than 50% of their cost and quality is just the name on the headstock. Other than that, they're not even worth the money. Um, so, anyways, this one here is the MH100. QMNT, I don't know, Queen Mutant Ninja Turtle. I guess that's what it stands for. I don't know. Um, its basic specs is it's a bass. It's a obviously a two piece. It's got a basswood body with a f quilted uh, maple top. Um, just one of these cheap uh, Tone Pro type bridges. It's got ESP design passive pickups. Of course, ESP machine heads. Um, the fi the the finish here and is basically kind of like a black chrome. Um, other than that, that's it, it's basically it's kind of bare bones, very cheap. Uh, this is a good guitar for basically a nunner build. I picked this up with a hard shell case for a hundred dollars. Uh, I was like, sure, no problem. I knew for a hundred bucks, there's going to be something with it, and which would make it a reason to do a build. But boy, did I figure out why I got it for a hundred bucks. Uh, the case is probably worth. I very much bought the case, and it came with a guitar. Um, so, I did set this thing up as best as I could, but obviously there is a problem. Other than I also just figured out that the tone knob don't work, which is fine. I don't give a shit about that anyways. Um, but the major issues I've noticed in this thing in here is all boils down to the neck itself. There's actually quite a few issues in it already. Um, first glance at it is the action on this thing is really <laughs> high and I had to set it up really uh -huh. high because the neck is really super <laughs> bowed this neck has Peroni's disease and I don't think a pill or anything like that is going to relieve this one here um, so Obviously, why not just adjust the truss rod and strain the neck out better? Don't give it such a ridiculous banana-shaped bow. Well, I kind of tried to do that and just 
what I've kind of seen in here is somebody else tried to do that and didn't know what the fuck they were doing. And they probably were just over tying it instead of trying to relieve it. And they stripped the shit out of the truss round nut. And I mean the shit is perfectly rounded. There is no tool in there that you can, no hand tool really that you can get this nut to turn at all. Uh, even the other tricks I've tried, you know, try to like almost force a flathead screwdriver to catch something to get it to turn and anything else is like, nope. So the remedy for that is I'm gonna have to get out some serious power tools here and a, and a screw head bolt extractor bit and actually have to extract the bit. Now, well not the bit, the nut. Well, the nut is toast, so that's for sure. So that's gonna get replaced, obviously. There's no saving that, regardless. So only close to get this playable is have this action super freaking high. Usually I prefer low action, kind of like almost the width of a credit card. This right here is about the width of a stack of dollar bills and shit. This is ridiculous. Like at its lowest point, it's literally about a quarter of an inch right about here. Oh my God, it's just ridiculous. Um, more issues on the neck, obviously because of the shoddy trying to adjust the truss rod. Their method on cleaning the neck is horrendous. Obviously, they got like the fret gunk on the frets. So they try to clean it with something by sanding it across the grain. So, geez. Yeah, so I'm gonna have to re, I'm gonna have to do some fine sanding and some love on the fretboard, which is fine. I think I'm gonna do what I did with this one here is do an ebonizing on this fretboard. This fretboard is a rosewood fretboard, which I don't give a <laughs> what the material is. I want it to look the way the theme of this guitar, guitar is gonna be. So I'm gonna do the same process as I did with this one. It's gonna do an ebonized trick. Um, there is also a dent in the third fret in here. And I'm gonna actually try what I've seen online on many channels on how to raise dents out of fret on a fretboard, basically the steaming trick, whether you use an I like a like a clothing iron or a soldering iron and a rag. So I'll give that a shot. There's not, got nothing to lose here. And even more into it. These first four threats, frets, frets, has some wear into it, little string marks. So, since we're gonna go into that, might as well actually attempt a fret leveling and dressing and all that other good <laughs> shit. So basically, yeah, most of the issues on this guitar is all in the neck, from the dent in the fretboard, the condition of the frets, the the nut for the truss rod, the neck just being out. Oh yeah, and I can kind of tell because of the super bow back here where the wood is actually jointed from the headstock to here. You can tell it's kind of a little bit, it's putting a lot of stress on it. So there is a hairline gap kind of separated. So I'm gonna have to do something with that. Um, obviously, and it looks like it was being played like that because there's like, kind of like gunk and stuff right on there. So I'm gonna have to clean that up and do something about it. Uh, try to make it look neat. I'm not gonna paint the back of the neck like I did with this. If anything, I'll just give it a, a satin finish after I clean up, because I have to do some sanding on it. Um, speaking since we're talking about paint on this, the finish I'm thinking I'm having in mind on this is not really totally changing it. I wanna enhance this. I'm not keen on, you know, for my personal preference of the orange color into this, but I want to make it into more of a reddish color. And I want to add, I don't know how it's going to look. I'm doing this all in theory. It's all in my head. Is that I'm going to add some pearl on top of this and yet still have the flame maple still exposed while this is more of a reddish hue. Same thing with the headstock. And unlike what I had to do with this one is do a whole new label and decal, I'm not gonna do that with this because I'm, like I said, I'm gonna preserve, you know, the, the whole 
wood stain look, make it look even. So I'm just gonna go ahead and carefully cut out and mask this off and just do all the work around it and re-clear it up there so you won't even notice a difference. Um, so that's it on the paint-wise. Now, as far as the hardware goes, full, just like this one, is a full hardware change. I'm not keen on the black chrome, but I'm more keen on black. So, knobs are going. The bridge, I'm replacing it with a shower uh, bridge. And I'm choosing shower on this one because it's a uh, German made and tends these German guitar made parts, especially like the original Floyd Roses and their machining and their metal work on it is, is top notch. So I'm going to, even just for a bridge like this, I want to give it a go. And just like this one, a roller bridge. I am a strong believer in these roller bridges setups for something like this. Because I, I don't know why you would want to have a blade there, especially when you have the wounded strings there on the edge of a blade as you're bending and tuning and shifting strings. You know, you're just kind of kick, 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 kick. And it's, a, and it's a sharp, you know, it's a sharp bend right there. You can... That's a, that's a weak spot. If you have a nice curve into the, even though it's metal, strings are metal and it's just a string. You got a nice curve there. It's, it's like even, it's just even wear. So in theory, you should get less breakage and you're not resting on a sharp edge. If, if you palm mute on the bridge, it's just a little bit more comfortable. And the tuning keys are going to be replaced with Godo uh, lock and tuning keys because obviously this is not a Floyd Rose double locket system, so I want to have locking keys. Um, and the pickups is what's pretty much cost more than the guitar and everything else altogether. I am going for Fishman Fluence, the Devin Townsend Signature Series, just because I really like the guy, I like his music, but it's not going to make him sound like him, but I kind of want to have this guitar in the same tuning as Devin Townsend tends to play in, even though he's got a couple of them. This one I'm pretty much going to probably do in a lot of open C. It's, it, I believe it's C, G, C, G, B, E. Um, so, because I like to have a different guitar for different tunings, just easier to deal with. Um, there was one thing I was mentioning. Oh, yeah. And other than, you know, got to install a battery box on the back. I'm gonna put here a kill switch, an LED kill switch for like anyone who's, you probably mostly known for Tom Morello and Buckethead, but you know, I wanna try a guitar with a kill switch and I think this is one I'm gonna experiment with on and I'm not just gonna go put a hole into it and go, here you go, here's a fucking kill switch. Uh, Cause what well, you'll see, you can't see here, but where the knobs and the toggle switch is, there is a bevel where they made the hole for it. I need, I wanna recreate that so it looks like the kill switch, you know, came from, like it was meant to be here. Not like something that was added after. I do not wanna make it look like an afterthought. I wanna make it look legit. Um, and I'm gonna end up also, what I also have to do, all these little screws here, the screws that mount the pickups, the back plate, even the neck itself. I mean, little, every little screw here is rusted and corroded. And they're, they're junk. I'm gonna to have to replace all the little screws here. The string ferrules, them, I'm just gonna go ahead and clean them up and I'm gonna have them repainted. I'm gonna take them to my work because I got some really better stuff than the stuff you, you get on the shelf. Trust me on this. Uh, same thing with the neck plate here. I'm gonna have, I'm gonna just go take that in and of course I can have it powder coated. Anybody else I would suggest paint it and unless you have access to a powder coat shop. Uh, but yeah, I'm gonna powder coat that because I'm not a fan of chrome. I'm just not a fan of it. So that's kind of like the scope of work on this thing. As of, and how this thing sounds in case you just wanna know is Thank <laughs> you.
Kind of, it doesn't, it feels like I mean, because of the neck bow, look at this. No matter what, where I put my finger, which fret, doesn't do shit. Because it's straight here and brr, sucks. Pinch harmonics is super easy because the strings are so high. Well, boy, this action sucks. Might as well be playing a violin. Anyways, so that's kind of a quick rundown on what we're gonna do with this thing. So, time to get to the oversized workbench. Time to take this thing all apart. And when this thing is back together, this thing is gonna be one wicked, wicked guitar. So, join me on this ride here. Buckle up, motherfuckers, and have an ice cream cone. Oh, stupid time lapse.
So I'm stepping in here just to explain what looks kind of odd is why am I taking a drill to one screw of the pickup holder thingy? Well, that one screw was totally stripped and rusted and just could not be unscrewed. So I'm literally taking a screw extractor and just working at it just to get it out. And even with that, if the threads were just messed up, it just wasn't cooperated. Um, needless to say, like I said before, I'm replacing all the screws on because they're all freaking toast. So, in case you wonder why am I taking a drill bit to that and a pry bar, it's just one screw is just dumb. Now right here was actually probably the most difficult part of disassembling this whole guitar. And so what the problem is, is with that bridge, the post and the sleeve to it has to come out. Well the post you just unthread, but the sleeve, you know, it's press fitted into the body. The correct way, the normal way to get that sleeve out is you try to find a bolt with a matching thread that's longer than the post that goes for that sleeve and what you do is you thread it in and you screw it all the way down so the head the head of that bolt or well actually the end of the bolt hits the body and as you keep turning on it it causes that sleeve to slide up and out of the body and that's how you remove it that's the normal way um, look through all my little collections of nut of bolts and all that stuff I had nothing with the right thread size at all um, so I had to think of on the fly on how am I gonna get that out so what I did was is basically looked for any small little little screw that I can actually s slip in there that will fall all the way through but yet not be wedged on the inner threads of the sleeve and kind of used it as a spacer and then I took the post that belongs to that sleeve and used that as the nut in question and so what I'm actually doing is pushing on those other screws as a spacer and it pulls the sleeve out ever so much and then I have to add another small little screw basically grow a spacer and keep working at it that's what I had to do on the fly um, only because I didn't have a, uh, a bolt with the correct type of threads to actually do it out. A little bit of a bitch, a little bit of a hassle, but yeah, got it out. Sometimes you got to think on the fly. Now, once again, I'm stepping in here for the final time, uh, just to mention about removing the string ferrules. Now, the only reason why I'm removing them is, is because I'm going to end up refinishing the body anyways. 
Uh, these ones are tight, so to remove them, obviously you have to kind of pry them up with a small screwdriver and some flush cutters to grab underneath them to pull them. The downside is you're going to somewhat make little marks into the finish. So if you're not going to refinish the body, I would suggest not removing them. And if you want to clean them like I do, mask around them and just repaint them on the body. Don't even bother removing them. But I'm redoing the finish anyway, so it's going to get re-clear coat anyway, so that wasn't a problem. Um, so that's what it takes to remove the small upper ones. Now the bottom ones right there, that was a little bit of a trick. Uh, the open ends for the bottom is wider than the ones on the top of the body, which is smaller. To get the bottom ones out, you literally got to use something like a punch to go through the top, so it has to be thin. But it can't be too thin, we'll go through the little hole for the strings. So I was trying uh, different types of screws I can use as a punch that would fit just right and nothing was working out right. When the end I found out it was working is just take a little Allen wrench key and just use that. But make sure you go at it at an angle so you don't go through the hole. You go and you hit the side of it and you'll get them all out. That's it. So just like tearing down the guitar with some unexpected surprises, uh, we have some unexpected surprises with this damn neck. Uh, before I wanted to push the record button, I just wanted to actually test, you know, the extractor just by, you know, putting the right size in there and just giving it a little tug just to make sure it works. Um, well, it sure didn't take much to go ahead and snap the head of it right off. So now it's stuck in there, which tells me if that ain't going to unscrew this thing, nothing's going to unscrew this thing. So that nut is seized onto the truss rod. So the only thing really left to do is to remove the fingerboard, remove the tr truss rod, and possibly either replace the truss rod or see if I could figure out how to get the nut off it with the truss rod already out. And maybe save it. Um, starting to bear the question on what's the history on this guitar here, knowing that the screws were, every screw was all rusted and there's a lot of corrosion. Makes me think this guitar was in a lot of moisture or, or humidity or something that really seized anything, every moving part. It like, it did, there was something with it. So, let's get right into it. So, got to get take this fingerboard off, but we don't want to destroy it. And just like every other video on the net, we're going to do the same method. The principle is the same. You got to heat the glue underneath it. You got to work and pry it off as you go. Um, so, and of course, what everybody's favorite tool is, an iron. I have this set. No one mentions on here, by the way, on what temp they're using. I'm assuming the highest temp. Um, some say to remove the frets off it itself and, and a lot of them actually don't Well, I've seen everyone else use theirs and they're not removing the frets So I don't really see the need to do that either plus, you know, the frets actually go Deep down into here. So it'll probably help with the heat transfer so I'm gonna work my way starting on the first fret and work my way to the biggest one um, and the reason why that is, is that this is not like a fender neck where it hangs off, where the fretboard itself hangs off. Even though this looks like it hangs off, part of the neck itself is there and I don't want to destroy that. So I'm going to go work this way out. So what they say to do is put an iron on it. Maybe I don't want to have this pad here. It might melt it. <laughs> Hopefully this will be stable enough so you can get a good view of it. Well, I better have to do something that will keep this thing stable. Let's see. Got a, maybe a block of wood or something. Alright, we're back. Got a couple blocks of wood here. So, just going to go ahead and Get this iron stable somehow. 
Part of the problem is the f is the damn cord. Nice little balance act. So I'm gonna let this sit for about 10 minutes and then we'll start working the tools I'm gonna be working with. A couple spats, well, this little spat right here. And you know, putty knife, basically you don't want, you want like thin metal, but very rigid to scoop underneath it. You don't want to be hammering, so. 10 minutes, work it, and we'll see where we're at. It's been about 10 minutes, let's try this out. The iron, and let's just start. One of the things you say to do is like, kind of like, yeah, oh yeah, there we go. That was easy. Heck, probably don't even need that big one. Ow. Hi. Okay. That was pretty easy right there. And removing this is not gonna be a problem. So now I'm gonna place the iron. Well, this little more about the middle of the neck and give it another 10 minutes okay more time has elapsed continue on let it rip hater chip Let's go down until this truss rod wants to come out This side of it. So worky work. On this side. Trick is not to like force it hard. Let the heat do the work. I mean, seriously, this is how much bow it is. That truss rod wants to come out. So, that's probably why it was so easy to get it started in the first place. So, now I'm pretty much kind of like in the middle towards the last half of the neck. So, gonna get a little bit more stability somehow. There we go. All right, another 10 minutes. Hey, back for more. Work it in. There we go. Ooh, yeah. That's some movement now. Huh, I mean, you just take a smoking after this. As intimidating this looks, it's actually not that bad. Okay. We're now down into the higher frets. So, here we go. Maybe one or two more times. Ah, and as long as it doesn't do that, bullshit. Stop doing that. Balance. Okay. So, one or two more times. I think we've done it off. Be getting close.
What I need to be careful is at the very end because there's a thin lip of the neck. Oh yeah, perfect. There we go. We'll kill, kill this iron here. Not oh, that's hot in hell. Oh. Here we go here. There's the truss rod. The problem is having all along is pop this sucker out. God, the truss rod is bowed. This is like super bowed. Wow. What if I have to replace it? Huh, look at that. It's, it's got a one hell of a curve here. Let's see if we can find a straight edge. Ah. So we use the flat part of this. And, ah, mother Let uh. I mean, seriously, look at that. I don't know if that's normal or not, but... But other than that, this is actually came out pretty clean. Not much glue, which is great for cleaning off. Also probably explains why it was like so easy to take off. So I'm gonna go research this for a minute and then and then we'll discuss what the next plan should be. So, well upon further inspection, you can't adjust this truss rod. The nut is welded on it. It's that's why it's not going to move, which is really dumb. I mean, look at this. So how are you supposed to, you know, dial your guitar in and just all that when you can't even do shit to it? That's dumb. I'm going to have to order a truss rod now. Which good thing they're very inexpensive. Uh, you can get them on Amazon for like about ten bucks. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to order one of those. When that gets here, get back to the neck. So, I guess what we can do is cut the video right here. I showed you on how to remove a fretboard. And solving this dilemma on what we got to do. So, when we come back, we'll be installing a new truss rod. And dealing with the rest of the fingerboard board. board.